Hey fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, if you're watching real time, it's because you're a Patreon patron and or you are a Twitch Prime subscriber who linked your account to your Amazon Prime account, so thank you for that. Uh, you also could be watching as a YouTube subscriber. If you're watching this and you're not paying for it and Twitch isn't paying for it, then you're getting it a week late and the price for that is you have to follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. Okay, a question today from YouTube from Burke Daniels. Hey Pack, I can't say enough how much I appreciate your sharing professional insight with the community for the last decade plus, yeah, 15 years, yeah. I know at some point you're going to leave the E3 parties behind. God, is there ever gonna be E3 again? That's just <laughs> I don't know, so, man. Makes me crazy and retire leaving a void among video game pundits, are we getting into a question, um, who don't understand the industry financial as well as you. My question is, who's the next Pactor? Oh, wow. Um, you know, there probably isn't gonna be a need for one because video game companies are going away and they're morphing into subscription services. Um, my associate, Nick McKay, is likely gonna replace me, and I'm gonna probably go four more years. I got four more years and I'm done. Um, Nick is probably going to replace me, and you know he's not going to do a pack attack video, so we probably aren't going to have these anymore. You can pass him on. <laughs> he won't. He just like he isn't. Joking. He won't have an opinion on this stuff. It's your personality. You yeah, I don't. I don't think there will be another one. Um, you know, I think that. Yeah, I don't want to leave the E three parts back. I will not retire until I have another E three party. I gotta have. I have to have one really good one. Um, I was cracking up. Do you follow me on Twitter? Yeah, of I, course. I post the name five people that you've been close to or met, and one is a lie. And then I realized I wasn't putting any game people. I said <laughs> I actually, you know, and I listed like twenty, and they were all like prominent, you know, like Jay Raymond and Phil uh, Spencer. I'm like, and I've actually had a glass of wine or tequila or scotch with every single one of these people. Yeah. That's what's so fun about the party. It it's is. just like everybody. Yeah. And they're all there and they're nice, and yeah. you get to know them, and they all That's care. Awesome. Yeah, I want to have One of the another. best days of the year. I want to have another E3. All right. um, yeah, I don't think there's a need for me. I mean, I got to say, when I started, there was a lot of video game companies, and there wasn't really good internet coverage, and there were like there were eleven or twelve big companies, and there was so much content. Everybody was making way more games. I mean, I remember uh, EA in two thousand six made 49 games. They published 49 console games. So it used to be overwhelming how much content. And you know, now they make like five. You know, and Activision makes like two. You know, and it used to be just really, you couldn't keep up with all the stuff that was going on. It was so complicated. And now it's just like, now obviously there's that many mobile games. There's hundreds and thousands of them. But it, you know, nobody asked me about, you know, uh, Heroes Rush. I mean, nobody cares about that stuff. So my knowledge is an anachronism. It's like from a from a past era, and nobody cares anymore. I have to say, I I laugh. Uh, you know, Brendan Sinclair mm -hmm. at, at Gamespot. So Brendan does an annual piece of predictions for the year, and I just dropped out of it. <laughs> he just he didn't ask me, and I read his thing, and it's like Doctor Sirkan Toto. Who, whatever the f that is, <laughs> you know, and Piers Harding roles, and it's always, you know, used to be Jesse Divnick. It's like, and I'm like, you're doing a predictions in the industry, and you're not even asking me, like, how funny. Um, so, like, mainstream media doesn't care about me anymore. Game media doesn't care about me anymore. You guys are it. You're 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 the last vested. So yes, I'm going to retire in four years, and when I do, uh, I think I'll just probably keep doing some consulting for companies because they do value what I have to say. But thank you, that's a very kind compliment. Nick McKay, who will never do a, a, a Nick attack video, he won't do it, uh, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he will. From Patreon, from Evan Adams. Hey, Pack, I'm no longer young and I don't have the time to stock the stocking status of silly consoles. Why don't retailers simply do prepay wait lists for consoles? Just take my money and send me one when they come in. I completely agree. Um, honestly, it, retailers should do it and console manufacturers should insist on it. The answer, and this is in a pre-COVID world, I mean, today I really don't get it. Um, the retailers want you coming back frequently to check to see if they're in stock. So Best Buy would like you to show up every week 
to see if you got any PlayStations, and then hope you buy some batteries when you're there, or you see the new shiny TV that you have to have, or the blender, or whatever. So they're all about foot traffic and hoping that they can talk you into buying something while you're there. Um, that's the real reason retailers don't. Console manufacturers should absolutely have a prepay wait list and fulfill it as they came in. And, and honestly, since they know their manufacturing plan, they could do, you know, if you're Sony, you could say, okay, we're selling a million a month. Let's do 500,000 through retail and 500,000 direct through prepay, prepay. And then they know, they can say to you, oh, you're number 1.5 million on the wait list. You're getting one in three months. I don't get it. It would be way consumer friendly, stupid of them not to do it. The only possible answer I can give you that would be rational is retailers would kill them if they did it and say you can't sell it direct. And maybe that's the case because the retailers really love forcing you to come in, but it's not consumer friendly. I completely agree with you. They should end that practice. The good news is we probably have seen the last console we'll ever see. Um, Game Pass is going to dominate. No one's ever buying a console from Microsoft again. And Sony is just going to let this thing dwindle away and die because all the content's going to be on Game Pass. So there's going to be one service that's going to be Game Pass, and that's where you're going to play all your games. I am kidding. Okay, from Sifted, from Game Baron Inc. With so many acquisitions happening, is it possible for a developer to accumulate enough equity to become a publisher? Or is it a sign of the times that if you're a developer, it's best just to plan for eventual acquisition? Um, boy, I don't know if anybody ever has morphed into a publisher. I guess I could say Valve did kinda, you know, by, but not really. Uh, Bethesda kinda, but they weren't what about really. Devolver? Yeah, that's, they're, they're not real. What do you mean they're not real? They're not. They're, they're, they're not a critical mass. I mean, they're an indie publisher. Right. But they, they're publishing other indie games. Yeah, tiny. Around. Yeah, tiny. I mean, their revenues are probably a couple hundred million. Yeah. I mean, they're tiny. That's what this guy's shooting for, right? He's saying, you're an indie developer. You want to start publishing other people's games. No, I mean, I think Devolver makes sense for indies with small games who want to be discovered. And they're the guys are super competent and good guys. And you're going to get a fair shake with Devolver. And I'm happy to see them succeed. I just, I, the question, though, was, you know, I thought he meant to become a major publisher. If you just mean a little publisher, yeah, sure. Anybody can publish games. I mean, I cover uh, Iron Source, which is essentially a, a demand side ad platform, and they publish games. You know, they have a tiny publishing business. Um, you know, Zynga bought a hyper casual game publisher called Rollick. Uh, they're out there. And you know, I think that in mobile there's more opportunity. Console and PC harder. Devolver's kind of it. I mean, there might be other guys. Embracer kinda. I mean, Embracer is a big publisher, and they'll publish a lot of indie games. I think. Um, I think the better better opportunity is like Nintendo could publish for third parties. I don't know why they don't. You know, they they keep them third party, but um, I, I don't know that there's any real need. That's why I said Valve kind of morphed into that through Steam because technically they're publishing games on Steam. I don't know how many games debut on Steam, but they can. So I think Valve is really the de facto publisher of choice. Devolver for indie games. Was they're, Embracer a developer first? They, they kind of appeared out of nowhere. They were a consolidator. So, so the guy bought THQ assets out of bankruptcy and formed THQ Nordic. And then, uh, then the Embracer is just the holding company. Yeah. Um, and then he started adding other assets. He's literally bought like ten companies. Yeah. So they, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're. Act he's really competent, but they're, they're a uh, roll up. I mean, they're just rolling up a bunch of indies. Um, and so, you know, Gearbox joining them, if it works, they're going to make a billion dollars. You know, but if. Bungie's worth 3.6. The Gearbox got ripped off. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Who got ripped off is Insomniac. Well, respawn. I mean, if you're Insomniac, respawn. are you now completely regretting selling for what you sold at? Yeah. I mean... Because, I mean, if <laughs> Ted if Ted could have guaranteed a million bucks to each employee, he would have. He's a good guy. He would have wanted I mean, to do that. I'd rather have Insomniac than Bungie. Just Same. being honest. They make better games. Yeah. More of them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Crazy. No, all this stuff is crazy. It is. So you know, it's possible. I don't. I don't think that we really need 
uh, publishers so much anymore because like I said, you can get your game published on Steam. You can get your game published on Xbox uh, Game Pass probably. You can get your game published in the stores, at Xbox and PlayStation Store, if you want. And, you know, that's where all these $15 games come from. Nintendo eShop, you get your game published there. So, you know, who's the publisher of Golf Story? Nintendo. Realistically, they are. So, you know, I think that's... It, I, I don't think game developers are going to have trouble getting published. The game's good. There's somebody out there who will do it. But morphing into a publisher or being acquired. Yeah, being acquired. Thanks for joining us on uh, Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. And I hope you're a Patreon patron. Or I hope that you have linked your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. And if you can do both of those, great. Uh, also, you can subscribe on YouTube or you can watch for free. And the price of that is follow me on Twitter and I'll, I'll uh, give you a shout out if you let me know. Um, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.